So you guys, you're saying something about how you named this basketball organization? Mm -hmm. how, did, how did the name come about? Well, my uncle Mike Daniel, he's, uh, he was a basketball player on Martha's Vineyard, uh, Massachusetts. And uh, so we started our organization as a three-on-three -three tournament. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we needed a name. Mm -hmm. And so he came up with Vineyard Streetball Classic. So it's all the way from Martha's, Martha's Vineyard. Yes. yes. Wow. That's where yes. it comes from. That's it pretty cool. From, yeah. We have a big history in our family uh, uh -huh. on Martha's Vineyard. And uh, our house was three, three, three houses down from the basketball court. And so that's in the summertime, that's what we did. We played basketball, went to mm -hmm. the beach, and went into town. That's, that's what you do up yeah, there, I guess, that's right? That's it, yeah. That's it. Uh -huh. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Serving's Kitchen with a Cause. Today, we're talking all about the Vineyard Street Ball Classic with our friends right here. Introduce yourselves. Omar Daniel. Robert Daniel. And they're going to be talking about Vineyard Street Ball Classic in just a few minutes. But first, if you watch the show, you know they have no idea what we're cooking today. All right, mm -hmm. so what we've done is we've got our ingredients under here. We call this the beach towel of deception Ooh. because it's deceiving you. You have no idea. We got them cloaked, but I'm going to reveal the ingredients and you're going to try to guess what we're cooking. Okay. You ready for this? Ready. Yes, we are. All right, here we go. Come on, Dad. <laughs> Figure this out. Yeah, this is a this is a father and son team right oh, here. Oh, boy. All okay. right. We got, we got two recipes. What we got? Well, the main dish is going to be a chicken something. You are correct. And, and I know you've got some gourmet experience. Oh, well. So, <laughs> so I could, well, my granddaddy was a, a chef, so yeah, I got a little there you something. Go. It's, in it's in your blood. Oh, oh man, you throw me off with the eggs. and the, yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to. Some type of bake salad. Or, here. Fruit salad looks like. Fruit salad, vineyard. yes. Okay, well, vineyard, right? So grapes. Right. So yeah. something with the grapes. These guys, uh, they're brilliant. They're brilliant. Uh, I don't know what that, uh, I'm not sure. You right. got me stuck. All right, so you did You did fantastic, believe it or not. Uh, People, they just can't guess what we're cooking normally. You got it right because we like to play off the name. Mm -hmm. So the first recipe, the chicken, the main chicken, mm -hmm. is Vineyard Street Ball Classic Chicken Parm. Oh, oh okay. All right. So we're doing chicken parmesan, and then you got the salad. You said salad, fruit yeah. salad, right, right. and then you said vineyard mm -hmm. because vineyard, yes, vineyards, we had to do something with grapes okay. so this is a creamy grape salad I've okay. never done this before okay. so this is gonna be our big test I mean chicken parm it's classic yes right, like right. we said uh -huh. and it's kind of that taste that, that everybody's familiar with but this grape salad this is kind of gonna kind of gonna be our test okay we're gonna see if that works or all not. right <laughs> sounds good so the first thing we're gonna do is cook the Vineyard Street Ball classic chicken parm when we come back All right, first recipe, the Vineyard Street Ball Classic Chicken Parm. Okay. So we got a couple things we got to do real quick. I'm going to get you guys to work, and I'm going to get to work. Okay. Over here in our pot, I've got just a little bit of olive oil in here right now. We need to add uh, four cloves of garlic, which is about uh, two heaping spoons of this. Okay. We need to add... A little bit of red pepper flakes, how much ever you want to add. Okay. And we need to add the tomato puree. And once you've added the tomato puree, you can fill this up with some water, uh, put it in there as well. And then we're okay. going to get it heating. All right. Okay. I'll open the can, Dad. You do the, yeah. the heaping. Do so over here, I'm going to do the dirty work. Oh, yes. Yeah, Cut this the is chicken. the uh, fun with salmonella. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get this out. Now, the, the recipe calls for four chicken breasts, so that's what we got. And it says also you want to split them in half. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut them in half here. And Just go ahead and pour this in there? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also going to use our uh, anger management device here, the, uh, oh, the tenderizer. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to flatten it a little bit. There you go. You can fill it up, son. Y'all are fast. Up enough, man. Good. 
question mark. Man, y'all are already done. I'm going to keep you all around. You're going to be on every show. Uh -huh. All right. So what we need to do is put that on simmer okay. on the oven back there. Okay. And uh, I'm sure you can figure that out. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, Let me know if you need any help back there. <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> so while I continue uh, working with this chicken, why don't you guys tell me about how this whole, what this whole thing is that you're doing okay. and kind of how it came about. All right. Well, I'll do a little bit. Dan, you can take a little bit as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, like, like I said earlier, uh, myself and my uncle, uh, we were avid basketball players uh, and we played on Martha's Vineyard every summer and we wanted to do something for kids. Um, and we saw a decline from when I was a kid to as an adult going back and, and vacationing on Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the courts were right there. As I said, they were, it was a central location. Uh, a lot of the kids would go there and play throughout the day. So we decided, hey, let's do a tournament. And we decided on the, the 4th of July week uh -huh. because um, you, you'd get a variety of people from all over the country coming, all over, over actually international, would come on the 4th of July week. Uh -huh. So that was a good time to do it. Uh, right. So we planned on doing it uh, every, every 4th of July week. And from 2002 to 2012, that's what we did. Okay. And the tournament grew from 50 kids to start to over 200 plus kids. Mm -hmm. um, we had food, DJ, me, uh, me, it was very, it was very interesting. Event. One year, not our planning, but Dr. J came by. Nice. Uh, one year, Ray Allen's daughter played, mm -hmm. and Ray Allen at the time was was on the yeah. Celtics. Yeah. Okay. So, Celtics, yeah. so it was a great time, uh, and so we just grew that to give the kids a physical outlet mm -hmm. uh, and something to do instead of just um, nothing to do. So right, right. It, it, it spawned out of that. If you let them find what they want to do, it's usually not going to be good. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My mm -hmm. son's the same way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and so uh, I moved from um, New York in 2005 mm -hmm. to Atlanta, Georgia. And um, when I first got here, I didn't do anything basketball related. I just mm -hmm. started working um, and I looked around. My son was very young at the time and my daughter was young at the time that, that eventually played basketball. Mm -hmm. um, and so when they were able to play rec basketball, I volunteered mm -hmm. and then it started uh, down here as well. So okay. we started doing rec basketball. Um, and the program, the, the three on three developed here. Uh, mm -hmm. I did three, three tournaments here in um, Georgia. And we decided to do some more programming as um, we got excited about basketball here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started a travel team. Mm -hmm. And throughout the years of being here, it wasn't as the same as it is in New York where there's a lot of outlets to play. Mm -hmm. uh, you further you go into Atlanta, there's more outlets right. to play. So right. we had to figure something out. And so we partnered with the Boys and Girls Club okay. and we've partnered with United, uh, United Methodist Church, mm -hmm. uh, Bright Star United Methodist Church here mm -hmm. in Douglasville. And we've just trying to give the kids a foundation mm -hmm. of basketball skills uh, academics, mm -hmm. um, focusing on a student athlete and what that looks like, and educating parents on basketball and how that could be a tool for the kids to grow and mm -hmm. get into college. Okay. Yeah. So by doing that, we've, we've had our, most of our kids that play with us uh, in our travel team play for the uh, respective high schools. Uh -huh. uh, the, all of them made the teams. Right. And uh, a lot of them were starters. Mm -hmm. uh, we gave them that initiative to to want to do the right thing in class, mm -hmm. so that they can play ball. Right. Um, and we've been doing this for for a few years, and it's mm -hmm. it's been well. It's worked well for us because mm -hmm. the kids are doing better, and they're becoming more confident in themselves. Right. And uh, they're learning. That's awesome. Right. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we will talk a little bit more about uh, sort of the byproducts of having this. Uh, basketball system in place here in Douglas County uh, in just a little bit, but first we got to take out some anger. 
Okay. I got to take out some anger on oh, this chicken. chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna beat beat this until it <laughs> gets down to about a quarter inch. All right. That's the last piece. So now what we have to do is create an assembly line. Okay. We're gonna dredge this. <clears throat> and what we got is we're gonna have some uh, flour and we're gonna have some egg. So what I'm gonna do is start working on the eggs. If you guys will put about a cup doesn't have to be perfect, of flour in here. Okay. Put the cup. In here? Yep. And then you can put uh, a decent amount of salt, a decent amount of pepper in there. One more thing. That yeah. was a cup, I think. Does one of you use a cup? That is a quarter cup, oh, okay. so mm -hmm. you can do four, four six of those. You don't, it doesn't have to be perfect since we're just using that to dredge. You gotta do that. Some pepper and salt. All right, here's the salt. <clears throat> this is the salt right here. Okay, I'll yep. get some nice sea salt. You're the first one who's guessed that. Yeah. See <laughs> I hide it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you try to play us, right? <laughs> I think we make a pretty good team. Yeah. Look what you did. All right, I'm going to get yeah, you I a did fork. That. We can kind of sift it. Yeah, sift that in a little bit. I'm going to get a whisk. So what's going to happen is we're going to grab a piece of the chicken, mm -hmm. we're going to dredge it in here, kind of shake it off a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can hand it to me, I'll put it in here, and then I'll put it on the cutting board over here. Uh, once we finish, I'm actually going to saute it or fry it, shallow fry it, mm -hmm. in, uh, in a pan. Mm -hmm. And then the mixture that you guys put together that's simmering on the stove over here, mm -hmm. all of that's gonna go together and it's gonna cook in the oven. Okay. Awesome. So let's get this started. So if you wanna grab one of those, dredge it in here, okay. and then I'll put it in the egg, and you get to stay clean. That's right. <laughs> you get to manage. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. And then I will handle this part. Oh, that's going to be a nice piece right there. Yeah. That big piece. That's the big piece of chicken. Yep. You already <laughs> called that one. <laughs> you called that one. Take it back. Okay. Remember that, Blake. Mm -hmm. Don't take his piece of chicken. Big piece of chicken. <laughs> that's it right there. You got to watch that guy. Y'all hungry back there yet? <laughs> yeah. well, they, will, they, will, they will be in a minute. As soon as it starts, they start you still smelling that. Yeah. Lena says she's hungry. <laughs> okay, rinse my fingers off here. Yeah. All right. Last piece right there. I'll get the skillet heated up. We'll get those we bad go. boys sauteing. They're going to be nice, brown, and crispy. I did the hard work, the messy work over on the stove. Uh, some of the things I did, I added a little bit of Parmesan cheese and a little bit of fresh chopped basil okay. mm. to the sauce. I sauteed the chicken about two or three minutes on each side. Uh, I put some of the sauce down on the bottom of our casserole dish. And as each piece of chicken got done, I just kind of laid it in on top of the sauce. Now, our job at this point 
is to add about half that cheese on top of here. So dad, won't you go take care of that? All right. And son, when he gets done, uh, what you'll do is add the rest of this on top nice and carefully so mm -hmm. we don't wash the cheese away. Okay. Uh, so that'll be the rest of this. Okay. And then dad, we're gonna add the rest of the cheese on top of the sauce. Okay. I got the low broiler on because I don't want to cook it too fast. We do want to cook it long enough so that the inside of the chicken gets cooked, obviously. Right. We don't, we don't want to get sick. Oh uh, and then at the very end, I may kick up the broiler to get that nice brown crispiness yes, on top. Yes, yes, yes. That looks good right there. Mm. All right, yeah. so we're going to add the rest of the sauce. And I can tilt it a little bit when you get to that point. And don't splash it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like my nice VSC shirt. Oh, Atlanta. Yes. Atlanta version. Beautiful. Mm. Man, it's going to be so good. So we're going to get this in the oven. It'll probably cook for about 20 minutes. That'll give us enough time to do our great recipe. Okay. You know what you're doing here, huh? Well, I, you know, I've been doing it a while. And like <laughs> I said, my, my wife has me doing the cooking at home. So. Yeah, so you got some good training. <laughs> That's right. Right. Perfect. Okay. All right, so now we'll add the rest of that cheese on top. You can just dump that thing all over the place. Nice and uh, artistic-like. Make it look pretty. Yeah. This is, this is probably not one of those recipes you want to do during the week if you work takes a little bit longer but this is this is one of those Sunday afternoon right, recipes. Right. Yeah, right. You, you, have you, get church, yeah. you, you sit down, you, you have a little lunch and then you get to work on this. Mm -hmm. That's going to make for a great supper or dinner. Yeah, stick to the bone. It. Yes. A good meal. <clears throat> get you through the week. That is quite a masterpiece, dad. I think we're gonna enjoy this. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes Marie Bob. All right, so if you can open the oven for me, I'll put this in here. We're gonna let it cook for about 20 and then we're gonna cook our last recipe. All right. This is a recipe that I have never done before. I've never done anything like this one before. Okay. All right, so to start, what we need to do is we're gonna take a cup of the sour cream and all of the cream cheese and put it in here. Okay. And then I'll grab a spatula and we can kind of mix it up and get okay. everything incorporated. So if you wanna go ahead and start with that, I got you a spoon so you can spoon into the cup to measure mm -hmm. it. That's probably easier. Mm -hmm. What do you say, a cup? I'll hand this over. A cup. Yeah. Yep, cup of sour cream. Okay. And I am getting some grapes ready. We got red grapes and we got white grapes. That's a cup? That's a half cup. Okay, one more. Now it's considered a salad. Uh, mm -hmm. even though it is a sweet salad. And a lot of people, they think, when they hear salad, they think lettuce. Mm -hmm. It's gotta have some greens in there, but this is uh, a, a less traditional salad. Okay. Cream cheese and sour cream together, amazing. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of sweetness in just a minute once we get this incorporated a little bit. We're gonna add uh, a third a cup of sugar. So, uh, Omar, if you wanna start kind of mixing, mixing that together. Dad, you can uh, you can go ahead and add a third of a cup of the sugar. A third of a cup. This is good? A little, you can do that and then just a little bit more. Just a little yeah, bit sprinkle more. that in there. Hold your hand, son. Go ahead, pour it on in there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to mix it in. He's gonna there. mix it. And then just a little bit more will be great. All right. We'll air on the side of sweet. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna grab that vanilla extract. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna add about a half of that. Okay. 
You can do this with a mixer. You can do it with uh, a beater thing. Yeah. Uh, but since we got a little bit of time today, we're just going to do it this way. And we did let the cream cheese sit out to soften, uh -huh. so it's a little bit easier if you pull it straight out of the refrigerator. Yeah, you're definitely yeah, going to need, need a, a mixer. workout. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Good to go. Uh, we're also going to add, if you'll hand me that lemon over there, we're going to do a little bit of lemon juice in here. Mm. Mm. Zesty. If you give me just a second, get a little bit of lemon juice sure. in there. Perfect. I got a big chunk of cream <laughs> cheese I'm trying to work out there. I think this was more work than that chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right, so with the grapes, what we're going to do is we'll pull them off of the stem mm -hmm. and you can cut them in half either way lengthwise in, in school they call it hot dog or hamburger mm -hmm. uh, so just, uh, dad if you want to grab the uh, serrated knife there this one right? yep you can just start cutting them in half and as we're doing this how smooth is, does this need to be uh, it shouldn't be that, looks, right? that looks good right there for okay. now okay. Um, we'll once we add the grapes we'll mix it up even more okay gotcha but while we're cutting up these grapes why don't you tell us a little bit more about your organization? And I know you guys are focused on basketball. You're focused on winning tournaments and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the natural byproduct of that is keeping kids busy, out of trouble, mm -hmm. teaching them other skills mm -hmm. besides what they're just learning on the court. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the some of the important things that we feel uh, will make. Um, a student athlete successful is being a student mm -hmm. and so uh, we really promote education uh, making sure that they are doing well in school um, going to school um, maintaining um, a B averages uh, in their classwork um, also we are also looking uh, with the high schoolers or our middle schoolers to start prepping for SATs and ACT testing mm -hmm. We're also um, teaming up with uh, um, local college uh, to do a college tour so that the, uh, the uh, athletes see what, it, what it's going to take to play a sport mm -hmm. and have their academics as well. Right, um, and I would, I would think that that would build up some excitement too. Right. Build up seeing excitement, a right. Campus. And we have four colleges in Douglasville and one, some of the colleges uh, from Division One to Division Three, we're looking at so they can see the commitments of all different levels. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone is going to uh, be what they call a blue chipper and make Division One. Right. Uh, some guys still have this skill set to play Division Two or Three, which is great. Uh, any any time you can um, continue your uh, career is, is is wonderful. Right. And maybe get some uh, benefit, financial assistance exactly. uh, at school. It's great. Uh, the other thing that we focus on too, which um, is education for the parent and the student is nutrition and oh, strength yeah. nutrition and strength conditioning um, those are key things to develop the the, the all-around player um, they need to know what they should be eating how much they should be um, liquids they should be in, in taking um, avoiding the fast foods and things of that nature that don't help them grow right um, and help them um, maintain their strength also strength and conditioning is important uh, for injuries so they don't they don't get as injured as much mm -hmm. uh, also to you know strengthen their bodies because the athletes at high school and college levels are elite athletes mm -hmm. you know so you see the guys on um, NCAA March Madness those guys are the top athletes because they train because they diet um, mm -hmm. and they take care of their bodies that season's long and the season's long you got and, you, stay ha in shape. and you have to stay in shape it, so that you don't have injuries mm -hmm. uh, so we're in, we implement those things as well into our programming for for students okay mm -hmm. and what about you know I guess naturally since uh, you guys are working with these these students and, and kids on a daily basis sometimes uh, you're almost like mentors to them as well. Yes, um, <clears throat> I have um, worked in psych, psych and in social services for many years before I started the program. My father is a retired corrections sergeant uh -huh. uh, in, from New York and uh, our head coach, he also was 
um, in the uh, field as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we provide guidance uh, to the kids. We talk about different things that are going on in, in the world, and we also are on them about you know um, integrity. Oh yeah. You know, um, and responsibility. A lot of a lot of uh, kids these these days um, they're not being responsible, and yeah. so uh, we stress that importance being on time, um, doing what you say. Uh huh. Uh, so that's really important with us. That's great. I mean, because as we said earlier, you give kids time to figure out what they want to do by themselves. They're usually gonna get in trouble so mm -hmm. if they've got a, a positive alternative something that they enjoy something that's going to keep them uh, busy yeah that's always good that's even good with adults yeah Gotta keep yeah. The adults busy yeah. too and you know in this day and age of this uh, you know instant access internet stuff you know we really the colleges are really looking at their pages what they're what they're doing on their pages uh, uh -huh. for the athletes and yeah they have to be very careful of what they do and say yeah social be media miss Misrepre misrepresented and so they have to be careful with the social media. Yeah, I think a lot of people, even even adults again, don't think about the ramifications of of what they say on social media, what they're posting mm -hmm. and people are losing their jobs over that. Losing your jobs and in the kids cases not getting a scholarship and they won't even know that they didn't get the scholarship because of what they had on their social media page. Mm -hmm. And so they have to, you know, we educate them on those things as well, on what, what they should, shouldn't be doing. Um, Everybody is using social media as a way to research uh, potential employees, mm -hmm. scholarship winners, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. In fact, my wife just interviewed for uh, a different position and the person she interviewed with you could tell by the questions that she asked she already, that she had she already looked, looked at, at her, her Facebook page. page. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She knew all about her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's um, that's something that kids need to learn about. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, we're we're looking always to partner with um, gym spaces uh, in Douglas County. Uh -huh. It's a little it's a little tight. Uh, so we we we're, we've worked with um, Boys and Girls Club and some churches and some schools, and we want to <coughs> grow um, a fundamentals program mm -hmm. for younger kids that are novice or intermediate that mm -hmm. are looking to get into basketball, right? Um, but don't have that much experience. Give them I'm an a, avenue. Yes, yeah, so I'm a fundamentals guy. I grew up in the '80s, so I, I truly believe in learning how to dribble with your left hand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the all the tools um, that the the, the pros have and working to get there and, and having the uh, ability to do that, which is the space and the time. So, you know, we're always looking to um, partner with the schools and stuff like that and getting the younger kids excited about playing the sport and learning the sport uh, so that they can compete once they get to middle school and high school. Right. Um, Douglas County just passed maybe a couple of years ago that now sixth graders can participate in middle school sports. Oh, awesome. Right, so now they can start even sooner, uh, but their skill sets have to be where they can be competitive. Right. And so the way you do that is consistent training of, mm -hmm. you know, how to dribble, how to shoot, you know, offense, defense, learning, yeah. learning the court, why you do things. Yeah. Um, before you get out there and try to be Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. or, but nowadays LeBron. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, that's that's our core, is fundamentals. We truly believe in fundamentals yeah. and being able to teach that. So. And just because you are allowed to play doesn't mean you are good enough to play when you're in middle school and high school. So mm -hmm. yeah, getting that have have, that foundation. Yeah, you got to, you have to practice. You have mm -hmm. to practice. You have to have somewhere to practice. So mm -hmm. that's why we're out here all the time looking for places and, and uh, to get these kids in there so they can come to practice mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's great. Well, we are finished. We are completely done except for a little bit of topping of the walnuts. So mm -hmm. I'm going to add that real quick. We're going to uh, finish up the chicken. It looks like it's probably got a few more minutes. And uh, we're, when we come back, we're gonna try this crazy concoction we just made. <laughs> <laughs> and our classic ch chicken palm, so stick around. The food is done, we're ready to eat. 
that chicken parm, that classic chicken parm looks pretty good. Yes, I sir. just have to say, I think we did a good job. I think yes. we did, I think we did. All right, and also our grape salad is, it looks good, it smells good, we're gonna find out. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna dish this up, All grab right. your plates, make sure we get some of those good top pieces. Mm -hmm. There we go. Number two. Well, that one looks like it's gonna be way too big for me. <laughs> Let's see, that'll work a little better. And scoop some of this out for you. There we go. All right. All right. Let's do this. Okay. What do you want to do first? Uh, let's do the salad. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Get a little walnut. Mm, not mm. bad. Not bad at all. That's actually really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's light. Mm -hmm. Refreshing. Mm -hmm. That's a great summer salad right there. Right yes. there. Get that in I the fridge. I will make that. Keep... Yes. Yeah. That is on the list. That's on the list. I like that. Yeah. Something new, see? All right, let's do this chicken parm. Right. You know, chicken parm is my favorite. I didn't mention well, that. Well, it's just lucky guess, I guess. Yes. When I was young, my mom would make me, ask me what I wanted for my birthday. Uh-huh. Chicken parm. That was it. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Very good. So you're not Italian? <laughs> Might be, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That is really good. Yeah. Hmm. I think we did a great job, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thank being you. on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you guys out there want to get involved with the uh, Vineyard Street Ball Classic, how do they do that? Okay. You can um, very easy. You can go to VineyardStreetBallClassic.com. And you can um, look at us on the website. Our phone numbers, our emails are there. Um, my email email is omar at vineyardstreetballclassic.com. My phone number is 678-458-5548. And they can get in touch with us that way. Awesome. Mm -hmm. This show, Servings Kitchen with the Cause, is all about getting involved. So get involved. Get off that couch. Get busy. If you're not going to get involved with, uh, you know, charities and that kind of stuff, just get out there and get active. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll see you next time on Servings Kitchen with a Cause. And now we got all that out of the way. Let's eat. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs>